Well, welcome to session two. Hopefully everybody is uh, doing okay with their assignment this week. This is uh, the week wet that our accreditors are uh, possibly visiting our lecture. So we might have a visitor later tonight. Um, and I'll try to watch, watch to see if anybody drops in. So let's begin. And I'll stop sharing my video if you don't have any questions. Here. Does it say week one agenda on the screen right now? Yes, it does. Week okay. one overview. Yeah. Yeah, does it say first hour week one overview review? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is our agenda for today, uh, Wednesday, January 13th. And um, first hour, we're going to do an overview, a review of our uh, week one and uh, the discussion and uh, assignment review. And then in the second hour, we're going to review the assessment. And then um, we have time, we'll do a W Flash demo. Uh, we may, before that, do Q&A on the discussion assignment and assessment, just because uh, that might take a little more time. So uh, we'll just play that one by ear uh, during the second hour. All right, so the announcers people have been asking what we're going to be using. It's going to be Adobe Flash CC 2015, and Jason Merrill is the one who will work with you. I posted a video. Uh, of installing Adobe Flash CC 2015 as a, an announcement. If you don't have that, then contact Jason Merrill and he'll set you up an account and uh, we'll go from there. Um, session one live lecture has been posted as an announcement. So go ahead and download that and, and uh, watch that. Also, we've posted an announcement for Misty Porch, the learning coach. And uh, I just want to point out in, in that, that if you don't, um, if you can't meet at any of these times for MISTI, what uh, you should do is either uh, go at a different time and meet with a different learning coach, but uh, she, they might not be as skilled as MISTI, or they may be as skilled. Uh, but, um, or you have another option of scheduling a one-on-one -on -one appointment directly with Misty, and this is her contact information right there. So you have several options. Go when she's there, schedule a one-on-one -on -one when she's not there, uh, go when and visit with somebody else, and then also I'm available also for scheduling one-on-one, uh, -on -one and um, I can even do a lab. Uh, open lab too. So um, those are all the different options. So let's review our week one. Uh, we're going to refresh our knowledge of the tools to produce our digital animations, uh, explore the types of files that are needed to deploy an animation in a cross platform environment, and then learn how to present the concepts with storyboards. So that's where we're headed this week. The object objectives for this week are mainly the storyboard, defining the user interface, and uh, recognizing that we have two different storyboard sizes, conceptualizing 
an interactive animated you know, infographic is focused. And then identifying using the tools to create an interactive animation. By the end of this mod, you will have conceptualized week one, created week two, produced pretty much week three and published week four, an animated infographic to be presented in your professional portfolio. And uh, recall that we will be outputting using HTML5 Canvas. And this professional portfolio would be your online portfolio. Um, and uh, I think you've already taken the class. I think that's a prerequisite for this class that you have created your online portfolio. Um, those who are attending right now, do you have an online portfolio set up, a website somewhere set up? Yes, we have it on, well, I have it on Behance. Oh, okay. Now, Behance is, uh, it is a portfolio website managed by Adobe. Uh, what we're creating this web, in this class, is where you can upload your animation to a custom website. Uh, I think Behance, you've been out, for, with Behance, you've been able to upload um, probably images. Is that correct? Right. So that's slight, a little bit different. Um, do you happen to have a custom website for your portfolio? I have my own personal website, like Wix.com. Okay. Wix is also a little bit restricted in that uh, you can customize it, which you can't do with Behance. But you can customize it with web pages, and, or at least the ones that they provide. In this class, um, in fact, I'm, I'll have to do a little research to see if Wix will let you upload HTML5. I'm going to make a note of that uh, because Wix did let you upload Adobe Flash files into it. So um, I'm going to guess that they're going to allow for that. So. What I'd like to do is just do a little research to make sure with your HTML, your Wix site, if you'll be able to upload the files that you create for this class into the Wix.com website. So, all right. So next is uh, the discussion. We'll go over that really quickly. And the assignment and the assessment have, uh, do you have any questions on the discussion yet? Uh, interactive animated infographics? No, I've, I've already posted on mine. Okay. All right, let's just, while we're at it, go look real quickly at your post, give you some quick feedback. Oh, this looks great. You have, um, let's just count real quick. See, did you make sure you had 150 words? Perfect. So you have a link and then this is excellent. Now here you have uh, two references which are good. One thing I'd like to recommend that you do is to use a citation uh, we can talk about that later. This is a reference, but uh, APA allows you to cite these right within the text, which which would mean something like a parenthesis, the author name, comma, 2015, and would reference this one, for example. Or if you're referencing this one, so 
So the citation means if you're doing anything inside here that needs to be, um, you make any points in here, specific points, then you create a citation. I'll show you that later. Okay. I like. mean, okay. And I also used that website you had told us about um, Monday. Oh, good. Yes. Makes yeah. it easy for me. Oh, yeah. I love that. When I found that, I was really, really happy. Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorites. Somebody. It was an app, right? Are you asking what app? Yeah. I, I remember you doing it, but it was an app, wasn't it not? Yeah. Just so you can, I'll, I'll let you, I'll show you again. Uh, for example, I'll show you how, how this would work. So let's say you're working on your discussion and you want to uh, do a search on Google. And, and let's search for the string. And let's say right here, we like this. And, and then right here is the plugin. Actually okay, so you have to download this plugin. Yep, Google Chrome yeah. called Refme, Refme Web Clipper. So I click that and it extracts all the information from this web page and creates the reference right there. Refme, okay. Yep, so for those of you who don't know with Google Chrome, you can click on here, go to settings, go to extensions, and then um, search, for, search for extensions right here. And then you type in rest me and then it's a, and this is it right here. And um, so I've already added it, but if you don't have it, you click on get more extensions and then you can add it. So that's one excellent thing. And then also because we also use shark and ProQuest, um, I want to show you that if you go home and then here, uh, the ProQuest, it's your home page, click ProQuest. Here's the login, Shark. You can copy the password. Click here to go to ProQuest. And um, I've already typed it in here, Shark, and then there's the password. Click login. And now let's do the same thing. Uh, search for the same, um, well, let's see, interactive infographics with animations. So let's come back here. Interactive um, infographic animation. It might not find anything in ProQuest, but let's give it a try. Okay, found 19 items. Well, that's quite interesting. Production of animated motion graphics. Data visualization infographics. Okay, so what I wanna show you is when you click on this, then you can click, so here's the full text, the abstract and so on. But I wanted to show you, watch this, click site, and there it is right there. See that? It defaults to the APA format. So you can grab the citation right from clicking site. That's really so cool. Just showing you some tips on how to quickly cite your um uh the, your references and um, microsoft word has a way for you to you to also create citations but i'm not going to go into that this is probably adequate to help you i really really love this this extension can't beat that <laughs> Okay, any questions? No, I'm good. Mine I didn't have to download. Um, so just for reference, um, you can just go ahead and get it. I mean, just go to their page. And I just, it has a place where it says website or anything on ref me. And, um, and I just put it in there and it, it did for me. Oh, so you didn't have to download it, right? No, I didn't have to download it. Oh, that's cool. Well, did you? Yeah. 
I, I'm having oh, a problem. This is Vicky. I'm having a problem downloading um, Flash onto my computer, Flash CC. Sure. Um, I'm going to email you later and get the guy's name that I need to talk to about downloading it. What's his name? Yep, Jason Merrill. Jason, okay. Because it keeps giving me an error for some reason when I try and download Flash. So Oops. I'm having a little bit of issue. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay. Jason yeah. Merrill at EDU. Okay. Oh, you know what? Uh, that actually is independence.edu. Oh. So let me fix that really quick just so that. Someone sounds very rested. Yeah, it's the other half. He's snoring. Sorry, everybody. Do you have a no, dog? My dog's snoring as well. It's quite funny. That's cute. <laughs> okay, so Jason Merrill at independence.edu. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You bet. <laughs> that was cute. Okay, so uh, we are talking about the discussion and we've figured out how to um, do searches. Um, this is a two part answer. One is the what is an interactive animated infographic and the second is share with your fellow classmates your concept of what your final project may entail. Okay, then the assignment is uh, creating two storyboards of your self promo interactive animated infographic. One for the desktop, one for mo mobile, specifically a smartphone. And when designing for a mobile device or smartphone, you have to take into consideration people be using your fingers. So that that has to do with the user interface. That's the screen. The other thing I read, Chip, is that you know mobile devices they they transform from um, vertical to horizontal. You know, and yeah, you have to keep point. that in mind as well, right? Yeah, it's uh, that's an interesting observation. The the ability to tip the screen, uh, you can you can you can tip your display screen on your laptop, but it's much harder to get the screen to flip. You have to put a like a. Well, on a cell phone, that's just normal. That everybody flips their phone from side to side just to to read it. So if I develop a website. For a phone, or you know, I have to keep that in mind as well. Yes, and one might think that we should um, be concerned about a, another design, a portrait. One would be portrait, as you can see. This is portrait. Is this one assumes this assignment assumes a portrait view only? But what you're saying, you know, of your mobile, and then. Is that Landscape. I need three, right? Mm. Me. Reality. Say that again. I I need three storyboards in reality because a phone will flip back and forth, you know, and the desktop I'm not going to move, but the one on the right, which is the cell phone, I'm going to have to adjust and move um, horizontally. So. I need three storyboards in reality if I was doing something for a client. No? I, I see what you're saying, and uh, I agree with you that you would need a 16-9 uh, portrait and a 9-16 and a uh, landscape right. for a, flip, a phone that's flipped. I agree. But for the assignment, we don't have to. That's correct. Okay. Yep, good question. All right. Now, I thought that we could spend a little bit of time sharing what we may have thus far uh, the process that I go through is uh, well the video that we 
have has the individual using a Wacom pen to do his storyboarding. If you look at the readings and um, uh, readings and tools here, if you click on this link here, this is one of the required readings, uh, you'll see a video where the individual is using a Wacom. Now, we're not requiring you to, to do this kind of storyboarding. This is a really, a very much like an animated cartoon. Uh, and he's using the Wacom pen to, to draw the images. And obviously, not everybody's got a Wacom. And this, so what are different ways that we can do our storyboard other than using a Wacom pen? How are you doing your storyboard? The last class I did was on Illustrator. I drew it out on Illustrator, but I think this class I might draw it out by pencil and scan it in. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. I did mine the opposite. Last time I drew it out, and this time I'm using Illustrator. Are you really? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, here is the Wacom tablet that the that, uh, fellow was using. Hey, can the school provide us one of those? <laughs> uh, we can always I have one. How much are they? Mine only cost me 50 something plus tax. Go to Amazon. Really? Okay. Yeah. They're not very expensive. Unless you want to get really really i guess out there there probably are there's better ones i guess wait wait time is adequate so his example here is drawing what is like a cartoon definitely a storyboard and this has a, has a like a cartoon or a video or a movie storyboarding has a lot to do with coming from like movie preparation. So uh, ours, ours is uh, mainly just moving images, uh, arrows, and color. One student was asking me about panning, P-A-N-N-I-N-G, and zooming and panning on your images, and that's something that we'll we'll look at in either week next week or the next the third week where you can take the images of your portfolio and zoom in the different parts or zoom out um, so zooming panning and zooming and we'll also uh, look at using masks to reveal your images from your portfolio so um, Anyways, I just didn't want you to be concerned about the fact that he was just using a Wacom tablet. Here in the new feature summary with our required readings, um, we're going to be taking some of the questions of the assessment from here, as well as the previous one. Uh, and during the second hour today, we're going to review each question of the assessment. It is an open book assessment, but I think I just want to review each question to make sure nobody and make sure you don't have any questions about the meaning of the question. So we'll do that during the second hour. This is a list of all the, the updates in this release here. It's basically a new feature summary of what is released in this, uh, what is available in this release. They've got the bone tool uh, back, which, which is, this is, this is the effect of the bone tool. Importing uh, a certain format of video. Exporting bitmaps as sprite sheets for HTML5 Canvas. This is... Um, this Rhonda, is you were working with sprite sheets, weren't you? Yes, I, I was actually. Yeah. How'd you do on that? I did pretty good. I, I like doing that. It makes it a whole lot better when 
uh, you can combine things together and and then um, show them what what you have in one sheet instead of all over the place. That's great. I haven't even learned it, so I'm excited. Rhonda, what class was that in? We were in 360 together. Okay. That was the Animate Edge. Animation uh, 2, I guess. With Dr. with Mr. Brooks, I think. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we didn't go into sprites, but uh, Rhonda just decided to go wander off and <laughs> and go into sprites, which I thought that was amazing. Okay, awesome. Did you guys use uh, or you animate? I think in that class. We used no, edge, edge in that class, edge. yeah. So this is kind of different coming back to Flash because I know both of us has, we've had Flash before, but coming back to Flash is going to be a little bit different. I, I want to say I learned this right in Flash. And then... Um, Right. Um, right. It was a little bit of it, though. We didn't go over a whole lot of it. But um, I'm glad we're having to use it a little bit in here now. Yeah, so that leads me to this next feature, which is Universal Document Type Converter. This is new. Uh, 2014 did not have the ability for you to open up your FLA uh, projects project files, those are the flash project files, and then that were created using uh, in previous versions, and then to then convert it to the HTML5 canvas. Um, 2014 had, would prevent you from going between the two. You could, oh, 2014 would allow you to open both file types, but not convert them and not to save it out as. So um, you'd have to re retain the SWF format if it was an action script based flash project file until now. So that's nice to be able to open up the action script based one and then to save it out as uh, the HTML5 canvas format. Well, audio workflows are improved. Motion editors improve. Both of those are key key elements to Adobe Flash. Panel locking, and then here code snippet support for WebGL. Now, code snippets are where you can drag and drop uh, scripting that's already pre-created right into your script your scripting screen, and this WebGL means that it is for 2D, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional animations. We should have t-shirts that says, I love snippets. <laughs> yeah. Snippets are nice. That would be something you can create. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These other are... Um, Integrations lays Flash Player and Air SDK. So the Air SDK was a platform that was used to be the mechanism to operate on smartphones. When they phased out the Flash Player, they were using Air. Um, but now they have them integrated, so that's interesting. And then the latest Create JS libraries. This is the set of libraries that Adobe Flash is using in order to be able to support JavaScript. So um, this is CreateJS. Before Adobe Flash ActionScript-based projects could only uh, maintain ActionScript, but with 2014, 
and uh, I think even CS6, Adobe Flash incorporated JavaScript so that they could then output HTML5. And so what they did is uh, Adobe got a hold of uh, acquired, they didn't acquire this, but they, because this was open source JavaScript, what they did is they incorporated this each of these components into their uh, Adobe Flash so that all the objects for each of the, these, these represent uh, several objects each, um, the easel JavaScript, tween, Java, tweening JavaScript, sound JavaScript, freeload JavaScript, all of these were incorporated right into the code of of the Adobe, Adobe Flash tool, and that's how they've been able to support, so quickly support exporting in uh, JavaScript, because uh, the HTML5 and JavaScript go together. And that's what we're doing in this class, the HTML5 Canvas. This is their key. This is the key to their being able to do it. They okay, okay, Chip. Um, you know, when I go into uh, Photoshop, I have a, a error. Every time it says that I don't have a, j the right JavaScript plugin. I guess I got to oh, call. Really? Yeah. So I'm having issues with once I actually transferred to CC, I had s I'm having so many issues now. I guess I should just call or email. What's his name? Right. Sure. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, during the break, uh, I'll I'll have you share your screen so I can see what's going on. Okay. All right. That's fine. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt. All right. And then TypeScript definition file for WebGL. Um, the CreateJS is a set of libraries. The WebGL is also a set of libraries. And these libraries, when I say libraries, I mean uh, code snippets um, in our in our course description they talk about creating a code library and the, these are ones that come with Adobe Flash. This one allows for 2D and 3D um, manipulation. So well, that is the new feature summary. Required videos here, converting flash ads to HTML5. This is um, because the because these Swift files, which require the flash player, are now blocked. Um, and this this will give you this one will converting uh, flash ads into the HTML5 format. And this here is how to create, beginning from scratch, the HTML5 Canvas document. There's our storyboard template to download, Adobe Illustrator. Oh, I also wanted to mention that when you watch this video here, uh, you will, he will give you, there's a downloadable storyboard template, but his is a little bit different. This is a three, two by three, and we'll just have you use the one that's provided in the course. So um, if you have anything to share right now to review, now would be the good time to do that. of your storyboard if you have any questions okay vicky did you want to go first i don't have anything really set up so go ahead Rhonda. okay i stopped sharing i don't actually i don't have nothing so Really? I love the freckled frog.
Are you going to animate the fog tongue? Now that gives me an idea of animating, having. I I think the tongue should go out and in and that would be so cool on your first on your first um, slide. Just go crunk crunk, you know. <laughs> That'd be really cool. I like it. So what are the transitions going to be from frame to frame? Have you thought about transitions? I, I think you're muted right now. Uh, this is Rhonda. I don't know what she's doing. Yeah, I'm just talking along here. <laughs> but, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just talking like y'all can hear me. On the first slide, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to make the freckles because that's what the spots are. Yeah. Like popping in and out. Like it's in, like pop. I see you that. Know, like it's bubble popping. And then on the frog right here, um, I'm going to try to make the little frog when they click on the book the frog's tongue may click it that's and that's way cool i think you should put the frog still on the front page and do the tongue thing and then use frog as an icon to to click right and see and i'm just like okay well you know i could go several different ways but i really like the frog and the tongue and and um but i want the books to flip you know like they're opening or whatever or turn around or something right. and then um, on where the arrows are to the logos i want them to either come in or out right. like um, like really focusing on the logo <clears throat> or let them blink at different times so i'm not sure about that one and the rest i'm still trying to figure out but I, i'm not sure if this is the way that you want me to go with the storyboard is that the direction i should be going or should i be going a different direction and i haven't even started on these okay so. Rhonda. okay so yeah, this is exactly the direction I think uh, it's a great first step. Uh, and is there, what kind of uh, motion is and transitions are you going to have between each of these scenes, if you will? Yeah. Well, like um, the books, you know, how they slide in. You know, I'm I'm wanting them to slide in. I, I think I have it underneath. It will slide in the books, and when you click, it flips. And I will make the frog appear for the click to make the books flip. Oh, okay. But, now you're talking about animations on a given scene in a given scene, and my question was, right. what about the transition from one scene to the next? Is it just going to um, change? It, you know, um, is there, okay, so with what you're saying, when we go from, let's say, scene one to scene two, the transition is going to be just, uh, is it going to be a fade in, or is it just going to be, uh, you know what I mean when I say transition? Right, just like, um, like when they're sliding from books to the next scene no what he's saying Rhonda, is like you're going from a flat screen with your name and then you flip on to another screen that says all your books you have to gradually or do something dynamic that will bring the books out and say hey this is us you know I me mean? right Okay. So you're going from from frame to frame. All right, I'm gonna uh, share my screen really quick to show you. Okay, sure. Um, what I'm thinking, and 
Excuse me. Um, Adobe Flash doesn't really have built into it just um, any set transitions, but to, to teach you the concept of um, of a transition, what I'll do is I'll, uh, you, you probably already understand this, but um, let's say we go into, um, I'm going to show you here with. You know, I last module, I did this little, you know, like this little graphic thing, but transitioning, it, what you're telling us is fucking really, I'm sorry about language, but it's really good because it's crucial to go from one stage to the other. One thing to the next. See the bar yes. bar right there that you have the two little arrows? This one? Yes, that one. I'm thinking that one would come out of the page and then the other one would come in to the page. Now, yeah, so these are different types of transitions, cross fade, cross blur, color fade. Now let's, with this concept in mind, what I want to do is go back to your, uh, these are the different fades from one scene to the next. Now, I'm not saying you have to use these. I'm just saying I want you to think about the scene to scene transition issue. Now let's go back to yours. Uh, why don't you go ahead and share yours again, because I want to go back. Well, to well, Chip, that's the whole thing. I don't think we have been taught how to transition. Well, um, let's 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 look at yours again, and uh, I'll, I'll give let's you more us. information. Go ahead and share your screen again. Okay. All right. So, with that concept in the back of your mind. Now, what, now the answer might be uh, going from scene one to scene two, it might just be um, no, no kind of transition other than just one scene stops and the next scene, scene begins. So, so, so there's a blink, is what you're saying. It's like blink and it happens. Well, um, so let's just talk about this for a second. Uh, so you go from scene one, and then all of a sudden scene two begins, let's say after 10 seconds. Uh, right. like you, you should probably work on your timing there. How long do you want scene one to show? Right, yeah, I know. Maybe 10 seconds. seconds or something like that. Okay. Uh, so you see the upper right corner of your scene one? Mm -hmm. Right there, right. You'll need to decide how many seconds you want that scene to show. And I think I heard you say you want the, the speckles to appear. Is that correct? Yes, blink or, or pop, like they're coming in. And then, because these, these are just an idea. I, I wanted it to be all together. But, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them, I guess I should wait for that part. I guess I'm going too forward. But, no, um, no, like, that's a good idea. Yeah, you, you could spend like 10 seconds or 15 seconds on this scene. And, and during the 10 or 15 seconds, you can have those uh, spots get uh, appear and then go away and appear and go away. Um, so is that what you're talking about? That's fine. Yes, yeah. yes. That's, and then, um, but you need a frog. You know, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, the frog can show up, or but that's the speckles are really the freckled frog are the freckles of the frog already. So, right. um, and then also your freckled frog, your your graphic there, or I mean the logo, the O is that are those eyes above the? She's very clever with this. This I made for me and my husband's business, this logo. Oh, and, that's very good. And um, we're based out of Shreveport. And he drew the the concept, and I actually put it in the graphic. That was very good. And then we made it a shirt. And very good. Now, I was actually talking about the logo, your, your own brand, not scene four, but scene one. 
Team I, one. Yes. Team one. Is that yeah. what? What actual um, font are you using on that? Because you this thing here is the park side. It's the park side here. Right. And this one, uh, I'm not sure. But you changed it a bit since the last time I saw it. So, but I like it. It looks good. This one was green. This here, the freckle frog, and then this one was brown. But since my background, background, is, yeah. Yeah, I just went ahead and did white. Looks really good. Give it so, a different look. So, Chip, to uh, tell us. So, yeah, what I was saying is the, the eyes, the frog eyes above the O of your F. Oh, blink them. Blink them. Uh -huh. Make a blink. Yeah. You should make a blink yeah. on your eyes. I'm not sure how to do that. I guess make it. You have to do a, like a, um, well, I learned edged, but um, we're going to learn it in this class, how to create a, yeah, a blink on Maybe your eyes. I have them looking at each of the. No, they're going to just blink. That'd be really cool. Yeah. All right. That was just a question. All right. So let's move on. Zoom back out if you would. So let's say this, uh, you would you would adjust the time to say something like 10 seconds uh, there in scene one. And then, you know what I'm talking about up there, the time? Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then scene two, um, you might want to say uh, transition would just be a quick fade, a one second fade. Or, or maybe it's instant. So, so then scene two begins, and uh, I, am I am I right that you just want to have the green with the brown with nothing there? And then the did I hear you say that you're going to bring in the book, the book covers one by one from off the screen? Is that is that what I heard? Right. Yeah, slide in the books. Okay. I was even so, thinking about one of the freckles even splatting to make the brown on the bottom. Oh, but that's I'm interesting. Not sure how to do that to make it go into the? I'm thinking in here. Yeah, that's okay. interesting. So Chip, if we want, if she's keeping her background the same, 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 if we want to do different backgrounds on each stage. Or each scene, it'd be good, right? Or how do we do that? Transform that? Well, when you change the background, you are each scene is going to be different, and mm -hmm. and so there's not so much continuity through your animation, and it becomes more complex because you've got the different backgrounds. Um, so one one positive of having the same background <laughs> and her background would be just the green right. and the brown and that that continuity would go from scene to scene and that wouldn't move that would just be consistent uh but it's kind of not no uh defense or i'm not saying it's really bad but i'm just saying is if if i look at a computer like on tv we see more like action the background's moving and as well as the foreground so i'm here to learn to more to learn more about this you know move the background and move the foreground okay so uh when you move the background are you talking about like a pan or a zoom yeah yeah or even something like coming into the background, like say a cloud or something, you know, moving. Yeah. Through. I mean, like your if your book was something spectacular or something, and it brings some smoke coming off of it, you do that, or you know, you you just kind of control things that way. Okay. So let me before I go there, I want to just finish the thought I had with having the same background from scene to scene. Okay. And and the thing that would be changing are, are the, the elements of the foreground, which is the text and then also the 
the images themselves coming in, coming off the screen. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I want to make sure Rhonda is clear on. Uh, by the way, did you want to do any fading uh, with the text? Fade in, fade out? Or, or is it uh, just going to appear and then and then uh, it just appears there? And then uh, and then <coughs> the books come in one by one. Now, is there any interaction going on? Um, probably. That is our class, right? We're trying to be interactive. Right. right. It, it's the wording that probably come in or, you know, I can even like on the book covers when it comes in, I can make it like swing like Tarzan or something and then, you know, come to oh, like whatever. But um, you haven't showed us how to like to create a button on Flash to... You know, okay, if she's swinging her book, I want to I, I wanna click on it. So that's a button, right? Yeah, it would be clickable. That's interactive. Yep, that's right. Okay. That's what I, I need to learn. I'm sorry. Sure. And then maybe would you want to show a an arrow or something to move right well you, absolutely you gotta know that you can click on it so yeah so the arrow to move right if you and then you move right and then the next scene three appears or something like yeah. that well okay so Rhonda yes you, you had three things that we can click on on your second screen well, yeah, what he's saying is actually true. How do you how do you know as a, a user to go to screen three? It would probably I, I'm not sure. Um, I can make a button for them to go to the next page or forward or forward. Yeah. Okay. Almost like a PowerPoint kind of. I'm guessing you don't want to make it tacky though, you know, yeah. but you want to make it um, user friendly that it will go to the next screen. Right. And I'll probably have music too. Right. So that would be interesting because the music going and being interactive, then you, you have to keep in mind interactivity, if you jump around the music may also reset too depending on where you jump, jump so you need a reset and you'll need a um, forward button or something right yeah I mean, if, you, if you go back what do you do with your audio uh, if you go forward what do you do with your audio do you do you um that's you did you i mean there's yeah So we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. And um, scene three, so the transition, maybe after a certain amount of time, those book covers would go away and, and fade out if we, if we haven't clicked on them. And if we do click on them, maybe, we, maybe you could zoom in on one of the images. Um, and zoom out. That'd be really cool. Okay. Possibly. Um, and then we go to scene three. And so we could, uh, you know, you, what's the transition here? You want a little bit of continuity of your animations from one scene to the next. So it's it a little bit disruptive if you change transitions and change animations from each scene. Um, so what I'm saying is perhaps you can stay here. You could do a fade in on these rather than a um, let's see slide in the book. So you've got a slide in the books. When you click it, flips. 
And when you say flip, what do you mean? Like turn it, like how it flips over into a book. And so you'll have an icon like that, that when you go over it, it's going to say, yeah, click here kind of thing. Right. That would be the little frog. Okay, so when it flips, what happens? Well, it'll make it move, like, and flip on it. No, what, 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 if I was watching this and I clicked on it, what would I see? It would just be interactive. It would probably make it larger. You know how when you go and look at something on a website what well, why don't why don't you do like more like um pull me in more and say you know what it's about and stuff like that because uh, i already can see what it is okay all right let's do this let's move on it's we're going to be coming up on our break here and i just uh think Rhonda, i love what you did though spend enough time on Very good. reviewing that it's excellent and uh, so just keep in mind transitions and continuity of your animations. Uh, you don't have to change your animations, each one in order to be more valuable. It can be the same animation. Uh, Just like uh, Walt, Walt Disney. All right. So let's take a 10 minute break. And uh, during the break, and okay so let's go ahead i'll start the timer for our break now a couple things i wanted to do during the break uh one was one was um to go to wix.com and see if it allows you to upload a an animation. Okay. Uh, So, Chip, do you actually recommend Wix as a no, good no, I'm web just design? Saying, I'm just, no, I'm just doing it because she has a Wix website. Who does? I do. You do? Do you like it? I have a Wix, Weebly, and um, a GoDaddy. <laughs> I don't have many. Do you really? Do you like it, Wix? Oh yeah, I, I like their um, some of their uh, things on the side. What he's doing here, mm -hmm. all the pages and things you can do, and then Weebly has some that you know I like over there as well. Right. And then, but I go with GoDaddy with my books, so I like I've been with them for years. You know, it's kind of funny. You think you can wait, you actually build one website and go with that, but you can't. You have to go to different places, don't you? Yeah. I mean, like with Wix and. I've heard also with Weebly and Wix, if you don't pay for the, um, the site, you can uh, lose all your information. So I don't know how true it is, but you okay. know, when you have a lot of information, you really want to secure it. All right. So what what I found here is how you add HTML. Now um, the code itself, and clicked on ads and clicked on more in the HTML code. Now, 
you're going to be creating an HTML5 document, and it'll also have JavaScript, and it'll also, because it's animated, um, probably will have some CSS too. And I'm going to guess that this will not be able to handle all that. Let's see, you could embed the JavaScript to the file, uh, and take the CSS also. Mm. That's crazy. Let's see. What I'll do is, uh, after class, I'm going to experiment with this. What I'll do is I'll, I'll um, generate an animation, and then it might take a little custom coding to, to make sure the CSS is an embedded style sheet and make sure the JavaScript is embedded inside the HTML file. And then I'll paste it here. There's a good chance it may come back and say, hey, you can't do JavaScript. Uh, or even CSS. Um, oh, maybe you can. They would support it. This surprises me that they. Yay. Now I can put whatever I make in this class onto the Wix. That's By what I'm way. testing. Okay. That's exactly what I'm, I'm researching right this minute. Hmm. Here's your answer. This is what concerns me, you know, the JavaScript, because that's the animation that's going to be. So we're all, we're trying to find the question whether or not you can embed what you create in this class into your Wix web, website, and it's going to have JavaScript. So this is the guy from Wix, and he says the only way to embed JavaScript is using the HTML app. However, please note the code will only function within the constraints of the HTML app frame. This is um, HTML iframe embed. So, <laughs> so basically you have to use their products to put in there but like any app and then you can embed it frame embed add the app i'm wondering if this is being added to All right, this, what this is, is it is how to take your Wix website and embed it into another website. An iframe is where you can take another website and have it show up. Oh, wow, okay inside a separate website. Huh. So how does that help? I'm gonna to have to play around with this because I'm not real sure on how to take what we create, this Wix app market. That yeah. These are extensions to the Wix platform. So one of these extensions makes it so that you can see it's, if it's an iframe, all it's doing is just taking an existing. Anyway, it's off to play with that. So that was one thing I wanted to do during the break. The other thing I wanted to do is uh, the JavaScript error that's on your, that you're seeing um, 
Do you want to show, share your screen? Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a lot going on. I have a lot going on, so. Let me get into my screen. Hmm, dog's still snoring away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, we're doing Photoshop. That's quite funny. Okay, where is your screen? Where is it? Here you are. How do I share screen? There you go. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm trying to make him stop, but I'm sorry. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> I have to mute mine because my kids. <laughs> oh, God. Can you see my screen? Mm hmm. All right. Yep. I'm trying to go into Photoshop right now. That's oh, it. My version says it could not be loaded because folks was unable to find the JavaScript plugin. I can still use Photoshop, but I, I don't know if this is a big deal or not. Hold on, let me see. Extension. All right, we just hit our 10 minute mark on our, um, on our uh, break. break. But, but let me, oh my God. let me get a snapshot that of that. All right, all right. Well, I just snapshotted your your error message, so I'll go ahead and after our class, I'll, I'll look at that. Okay. Okay. Now let's spend some time going reviewing for the assessment, and the assessment is based upon required readings and videos. Uh, section and that required reading video section is right here where we do week one and you can see on this next uh, page it'll show readings and tools and so there's required readings and here's required videos now one little tip that I want to share with you is that this is an, this is an open book exam all right, and so uh, while you're taking the test, you're, are, you're welcome to look at these other resources. Now, one little tip I wanna show you is how to go, uh, and, and I have a Mac, how to go from screen to screen. And so um, what I'll do is I will change that from full screen, and I want to, copy this and paste it in here. And so now we've got two tabs that are in the class. And if you grab one and pull it down and let go, then it's two separate tabs. Now uh, we can maximize this tab. Now if I do a control left arrow, I'll come to this other one and I can maximize that so control right arrow and then control left arrow so now I'm going between two tabs in Google Chrome now you can do the same thing with your Mozilla Firefox or Safari oh yeah so I do that all the time yeah all the, time. <laughs> the nice thing to do is to organize your different workspaces so that you can then go control right arrow control left arrow so what that means is you can start the exam and then set, first of all set these up like this 
And um, this is the assignment, and then the next one is the assessment. So you start the exam, and then you can do a control right arrow and, and click on this and or click on this. And that way you can have these at your fingertips. Control left arrow, taking the exam question, control right arrow, you can make sure you've got the right answer. Okay, so Chip, is it very hard, this exam? Well, we're gonna go over each of the questions and, and then I'm not gonna give you the answers and, and I'm not gonna give you the uh, options of the, um, the options for the answers, but we will at least be able to see the question itself. And so here is, for example, question number one. And this is how it will read. From week one's readings and tools, required readings and videos, how to storyboard. So that would be uh, this one right here. Okay? So that re readings and tools, and then how to storyboard. See that? So uh, that is right here. So here you would start the quiz. The first question will be, in fact, I'll grab this and put it like right there. You start the quiz, the first question will read from week one's reading and tools, blah, 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 how to storyboard. And that's it, this one here. Okay, you with me? Then the question is, in the video, yes. what does it look like? See, right here, what does it look like? Here's the video. Um, he discusses some great tips on quickly creating a storyboard, even if you don't know how to draw very well. What is the tip that works best for his process? Okay, so watch this video. And, and he comes right out and says, um, his tip. As I did. It will be a multiple choice. It will be a multiple choice question. Okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, in the video, discusses some great tips, quickly creating a storyboard if you don't know how to draw. What is the tip that works best for his process? And he'll explain that. And you can choose the option. All right, so that's, that's the first question. There's eight questions total. Here's the next question. For week one's reading and tools, requiring how to storyboard. In this article, he talks about how to storyboard effectively. What are the three things he suggests to help convey the story? So again, it's here on this, um, um, on this, somewhere on this page, okay? Okay. And so that's question number two. And be careful because it might have, it's like choose more than one answer. So I want you to make sure that if it's a square, that means it's a checkbox. If it's a circle, that means it's a bullet. And you can choose one only. So be cautious about that, making sure that you are, if it's a checkbox, that means you can have more than one answer to make up the answer. All right, so that's question number two. Question number three, from week one's readings and tools, required reading and videos, new features summary. Okay, so now we're going to go to this one here. See new feature summary. And right here is that second thing that they're talking about. So back to the question. With all the great new features in Animate, formerly Flash, one of the coolest things is being able to output to HTML5 Canvas. As we learned in the live session, abstract drawings cannot be created using CSS, but we can draw irregular shapes and animate and animate them. 
So if we need to export the animation HTML5 canvas and CSS and not a SWIFT, what does animate create for these irregular animated bitmap shapes? So let me say that again. What does animate create to actually flash for these irregular um, animated uh, bitmap shapes? So, okay. All right, so then the next question is, um, from week one's reading tools, new feature summary, what feature was, was removed from Flash 2014 CC and reintroduced in 2015 CC? I'm going to uh, just wonder if some of those things are, are helpful, but um, I think, Chip, if you tell us the answer, it would help. You're wanting me to give you the answer to each question? Yes. Are you serious? I'm totally serious. All right, I'm totally serious when I say no way. <laughs> All right. No, that would not be right for me to do that. All right. Question four. Question five. From week one's readings, new feature summary, and previous versions of Flash, the zoom level determines how wide your brush painted in 2015. It now includes the ability to have brush scaling and zoom level completely separate. You can, however, revert to the legacy way of handling brush scale and zoom level by disabling what checkbox? Let's see if. That is helpful. Okay. And let's move on from uh, week one's readings and tools. How to create and publish an HTML5 Canvas document. So that will be here. Um, this one here. Um, with animations being created, did you see where I see this, this one down here? With animations being created more and more using HTML5 Canvas, Adobe has created a way to take existing documents requiring the Flash player and convert them to HTML5. So they're viewable on any device. In this tutorial, they go over two ways to get your Swift animation converted over to HTML5. What are the two ways? All right, so watch this video. It's 12 minutes long, and that, and then that will help you get ready to take this question. Any questions on, on any of these questions? Other than what's the answer? No. Okay. No. It's going to be a multiple choice, so it'll be pretty straightforward. Oops, let's see. Question seven. All right, how to create and publish it. Same, same video. Once a document has been converted from a Swift to HTML5, the ActionScript code is all commented out since HTML5 only supports JavaScript. You will be required to rewrite the code equivalent actions in JavaScript in order to make the animation run as expected. So, um, this might be a true or false question. 
So, um, just be careful on that. It might be true or false. Okay, same video here. Really? Tell us the answer. You're funny. <laughs> You're very, very funny. No, I'm not. But I just want to know the answer. No, you're funny because this is being recorded and there's going to be 30 people listening <laughs> to the recording and including the associate dean and including the possibly uh -huh. important administrators and, and I'm trying to discourage you. Okay. And then question eight. This, it wouldn't be right. So. Question eight, I'm trying to do as best I can to help you and prepare you and to make sure you get a good grade instead of being able to take it more than once. I'm um, just going to only be able to take it once. There's only eight questions. And so each question is worth about 12 and a half points. And so losing one question will put you from an A to a B. So that's why I really want you guys to get some more. But Chip. We're having a major problem with um, the transition from Edge to Flash. I mean, is this, well, I, I'm not a programmer, so, and I'm a graphic designer. So, I don't know these questions. Okay, so the answers will become apparent when you read them. Read and watch the videos, right? Yeah, I got it. If you follow closely with the keywords that I was searching for, they went right to some of the answers. Right. Okay. So, hopefully, I, understand. I totally understand. Thank you. Okay. With the HTML5 Canvas API, there are tools that are not supported in HTML5 Canvas documents that are available in ActionScript three. In other words, what features are affected when converting AS3, ActionScript 3 to HTML5, Canvas documents? Select all that apply. So what, what you want to pay attention to is when you're watching this video. Um, and if you want, we can, let's see, I'm looking at our time here. We've, we've only been going 15 minutes and 16 minutes into our, um, into our uh, second hour here. Um, so let's see, I was going to say we could uh, possibly do some research while we're doing it, but let's see. Um, anyways, uh, I'll think about that. There are certain things that can be done in ActionScript animations that cannot be done in HTML5, and he'll talk about those. So um, so that's important that you watch that video and listen to him talk about that. So what I would do is uh, you take these questions, and you know I would probably do a run through with these questions, and uh, preparing yourself to take the test, and go through them once. Um, use these questions as you are watching the, the content and get your answers prepared. And then, and then I would take the quiz. So use these questions from our video here and prepare yourself so that when you take the test, you'll, you'll already have done the research and prepared your answer. And then that way you can be doubly sure that you're getting the right answer. So do that research before you take the quiz so you're prepared. If, you, if there's certain ones that you have questions on, 
uh, just send me an email before you take the quiz. I don't want you to take the quiz and say, oh, you know, number three, I didn't understand. I couldn't find the answer. Or you know, number eight was too confusing for me. What I want you to do is go ahead through all eight questions, get your answer, and if you don't feel confident that you have the answer, please send me an email before you take the quiz because I want to clarify any of the questions or any of the answers without without giving away the answer. Uh, I just want to make sure that you're 100% confident before you take the assessment. And uh, if if you don't find the answer, or um, uh, I'll work with you to help you make sure you're not missing it, uh, or I will be happy to explain anything that is being explained in here in this content. I'll be happy to explain it to you in a way that you understand better the question and possibly the content. Um, so um, I didn't want to just give all the answers here. So um, so how do you feel now? Do you feel like you can do this, or do you feel still lack confidence? Um, what? what? Actually, I don't know the questions, so I'll I'll be through it. I'll get through it. Well, wait a second. You don't know the questions. You don't know the answers. I don't know the questions and the answers. Here's what you do. You, Maybe you only you went through like a few of them. Wait a minute. These are them. The I have given you. These are the exact words from the question. Okay. So, and I gave you all of them. There are eight. Okay. There is eight. Have, okay. You have the exact wording of the question for each, for all eight questions. This, this is exact wording that comes from the quiz. Okay. Then I can do it. Okay. Um, I haven't put the list of answers. Um, I just decided to just put the contents of the questions themselves. So, okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, well, I think I. What I think I might do is, um, I think what I'll do is go ahead and add some more to our video uh, for tonight's class, where I explain some some of the context of these questions in a way that I will be providing you that you're not just reliant upon the the text is. Your, alone and your understanding of it. Um, I think that might help help prepare you for taking the test. So rather than just having the content of the question and relying upon your own understanding of it, um, I think what I'll do is I'll add some more content to our video tonight after uh, class that will present present more information about in a way that will help you answer these questions. So I'll work on that right after we adjourn our class. And then what I'll do is I'll add that in the, um, add that to the end of our lecture. And then, um, and then you'll have it there to refer to. And what I'll do is I won't, I won't go specifically through each of these questions as much as I'll make sure I'll cover the content in, in my review of that, of the uh, required readings and, and videos. All right, so uh, let's see, what time is it? It's 8.45. All right, let's do this. Uh, we'll, if you don't have any questions, 
Uh, let's go ahead and adjourn. Um, what we'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and um, start working on, on the rest of uh, the lecture. And I will, um, what I'll do is I'll upload a video of just that that I'm work that I'm working on, and then um, you can. I'll do that because uh, I'll send you guys uh, links to the specific video. I will add that video to the rest of the lecture, and then. Um, and but I think what I'll do is I'll send you guys a, a link to the to that video because you're here in class and you won't have to just go through the the video it's uh, the the uploaded video to find it. So so what's next? Well, uh, what we're going to do is uh, next Monday we're going to begin working on week two. So let's look at what is in store for week two. And here we're going to be drawing the assets and setting up the stage. Now the stage, we were talking about the background on your on your one animation, and so um, that's kind of where the stage comes into play. Uh, drawing assets and obviously importing images. Um, we're going to go further into that. So we're going to define and understand the importance of creating a good UI for desktop and mobile devices and create and execute original artwork pertaining to a self-promotional piece. And so that's going to be what we'll begin on next, uh, next Monday. Reading some tools, same um, here. We've got some more videos here. We're going to be linking to Linda in this and these. So. Okay. All right. Well, if you don't have any questions, thank you very much. Uh, I'll stay tuned here. Uh, we'll be transitioning to some more explanation to help with the assessment. And um, for now, uh, we'll, we'll sign off for now. Okay. Sounds great. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you very much. Good night. So let's review the required readings and videos, beginning with this link here, the how-to storyboard. Give it a second, it'll take a minute, a second to come up. And here we have a video where the individual is showing us how to create a storyboard this is the real cartoon-like storyboard uh, that you're familiar with, with cartoons or possibly movies. And you can see he's using different frames for each scene. And he's using a, a color, a grayscale actually. Uh, and he's using a uh, Waco, Wacom tablet and pen. Now you don't need to use that for yours. You can just copy in graphics and, and the like. But as he goes over this, you'll see that he, he's got templates, his own template, uh, which he'll let you download here. You'll see it's uh, six panels or six boards on a single page. And uh, each of those scenes or boards is a 16 by 9 ratio. So the storyboard is made up of, of using this template and it's got six, six boards on each page. So his preferred method is using the grayscale. You'll see that he uses a, a Photoshop and I think it's either Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, I can't remember which, and he sets the grayscale as he's going along. Uh, I think it's Photoshop, but um, let's go ahead and watch that and uh, take good notes.
on what he recommends. Now, in this section, how to storyboard effectively, he goes into a couple tips right here. His storyboard template has lines for the captions. It's basically where you can explain what's going on on the scene. So, a couple lines. And then also, using arrows to show camera movements, uh, there's some arrow to show some of the movement of the object itself. You can see other arrows up in there. But, but panning and zooming and so on can be shown in the, uh, the camera angle and the, it can be shown using arrows. And then he says color the object, but he's just referring to the grayscale. Color, color the object to differentiate it from the background. So here he, you can see draws the line and there's the horizon and he colors in the ground here with a tenth of gray and then the object itself. So he scales, uh, he changes grayscale by a factor of 10 when he applies shading. So uh, you don't need to use this storyboard template. We, we provided one in the classroom. All right, so let's go to this here. The next required reading. And you can go through this. They don't, they don't mention, but here this bone tool actually was not available in 2014. And it's been brought back into 2015. And they explain what the bone tool is. It's lifelike movements. It's called inverse kinematics. That's the that's the concept of behind the animation technology that's being used. It's called inverse kinematics. And this being able to import this type. Uh, that's a format type, video format type that, that can be imported. Another feature, exporting bitmaps as sprite sheet for HTML5 Canvas. Now, this is important because when you do an animation, that's really kind of uh, computer intensive. It's graphic intensive. It's, it's a video. And the architecture of the internet is such that they, it, it tries to minimize the number of times that your application that's running in the browser goes back to the server in order to get more information. So it behooves them to come up with technology or, or methods to minimize the, the well, they, well, they're what's called server requests. So if your animation is going on in your browser, but it's making constant calls back to the server, that's going to slow it down. So they've come up with a thing called Sprite Sheets, which facilitates minimizing the number of server requests. So what it, what it entails is that you take the items that are being animated on your animation and... Uh, saving them, converting them to bitmaps inside your project. This is inside the HTML5 Canvas project. And then there's a checkbox where you can uh, export the bitmaps to Sprite Sheet, and that allows you to pack all the bitmaps in Canvas document into a Sprite Sheet. So there's the new checkbox. You can see it right here. And it's the default one. And this is how you can manage that. The, again, the goal is to create information 
that can be moved as a big packet of information between the server and your browser application, the animation going on. And that's what this is. This facilitates that. This feature here, brush scaling with the stay zoom, the old, old method of doing zooming made the brush size that you've chosen independent of the zoom level. In other words, if I zoomed in, I, cho I would choose a brush size of let's say 20 pixels. And if I zoomed in really tight on my image, guess what? My brush size would stay 20 pixels. So this new feature called brush scaling with stage zoom allows you to check the checkbox so that it will, uh, well, the default is, uh, is actually, the checkbox will make you go back to the old kind, old way. But without it checked, you will, um, let's see, you must disable stage, so we'll check, okay, so zoom size with stage, now that's, so, let me get it right. The checkbox means you want to use the new way. Okay, so let me go over that one more time. Um, you must disable the stage level zoom. So this is the checkbox. And so if you want to go to the old way, you uncheck it. The old way is keep the same size of your brush stroke. And then the new way is, as you zoom, your brush size also scales identically. So let's say we're at a zoom level of 1,000 pixels that we're looking at, and we zoom from 1,000 down, down to 100. Let's say at 1,000, we had chosen a uh, pixel size of our brush to be, let's say, 20 pixels. And if we scale a factor of 10, going from 1,000 pixels down to 100, then our pen, our brush stroke, would go from 20 pixels, factor of 10, would be down to two pixels. So that's the new default behavior. It's enabled by this checkbox. If you want to revert to the earlier default behavior, maintaining a constant pixel size, even when you change the zoom level of the stage, you must disable the stage zoom level checkbox in the brush property inspector. Okay. Universal document type converter. So this is one way to convert your existing FLA projects, which were actions, action script, three file projects into other document types, such as HTML5 canvas or web or WebGL. That's the web graphics library. That's the JavaScript library for 2D and 3D animation. There it is right there. Click commands, convert to other document formats, and then select the target document type and specify the path of the converted file. This process right here is going to be defined uh, in a video right here. You watch it done. We'll do that next. And then some more information about approved audio workflows, improved motion editor, panel locking, code snippets, support for WebGL. Well, this is the library of code snippets. These are basically chunks of code already pre-done in more or less a template form that you can bring it in and then make little modifications to it. That's the value of these things. And they've got a section here for WebGL, which are chunks of JavaScript snippets that support 2D and 3D animation. And some more um, features here. Okay, so let's go on to the next one here. Just wanted to highlight those. And here we have um, right here, let's jump to this. 
This video, it, it's an interesting video, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and play it. I'm going to pause it during, it's only a three minute video. I'm going to pause it during it and make a commentary on it so that you can understand what's going on. With browsers beginning to block Flash ads from automatically playing, now is a great time to look at the existing capabilities within Flash Professional CC to convert and optimize content for HTML5 Canvas output. Okay, let me stop right there. He starts off by saying browsers are now not supporting ads that have been written in Adobe Flash, SWF. So that's kind of aggressive, you know, uh, websites that say, hey, if you're a Swift file, I'm not going to play you. So obviously there's an interest here to convert your ads, if you have like Flash ads on the internet, from Flash to HTML5 Canvas. Now, Watch what he does here. This here, he's opened a file called garage.fla. That's a, a Flash project file. And this is the ActionScript 3.0 version. And he's going to convert this file to another file. And it will also be open. New tab here. So he'll have two files open. One will be the opened of the ActionScript 3.0. And the next one will be uh, the converted one to the HTML5 Canvas, or it'll just say Canvas there. And that will be your, your tip that that file is an HTML5 Canvas um, project file. Here we have a very short animation. And right now, this is an ActionScript 3 based FLA file. So when we actually go and test, it outputs a Swift for playback in Flash Player. Let's go ahead and convert this for HTML5 can. Okay, you heard him say that. This project file creates a Swift file, and that's processed in Flash Player. But that's what we're going away from. So we can just go to Commands, Convert to Other Document Formats, and choose HTML5 Canvas, and hit OK. This process creates a Canvas-based document for us to work in. You'll notice in our output window, since we did have some action script on our last frame, it lets us know that frame scripts have been commented out, although everything in the timeline is exactly as it was inside of our action script 3 document. To so have a look at the actions. Okay, so you see there's the new project file. It's got Canvas in parentheses, and it's also he's it's thrown on a, a name garage underscore canvas, but that right there is your tip that you are using a, it, you, you are working with a HTML5 canvas based project file. They're different project files because that one outputs Swift. This one's going to be outputting HTML5 and JavaScript. Now, essentially that operation just copied the layers, one by one, automatically. These are all all the same name layers. You can see the animation is, is just the same. So that was one thing that it took care of automatically, copying each layer from the previous project file to the new project file. Next, he's going to go into the action script and this last frame here, you can see that little A there. That means that uh, this frame has action script associated with it. And he's going to bring that up and show you what he's got to do there. We'll select that last frame and open our actions to see that indeed our action script has been commented out. However, quick access to. Okay, it says commented out. So that slash asterisk, oh, it's the open comment. And here is asterisk slash, which is the close comment. And so by doing that, surrounding all that code with the open comment, close comment, Act, uh, Adobe Flash has essentially nulled it all out or made it as though it weren't there. So um, next he's going to introduce the JavaScript code that must be created instead. And he's going to use that code snippet library. He's going to click on a 
code snippet, which will copy it into his paste lab, his paste buffer. And then he'll start modifying this code and uh, then paste in the other code and then modify that. The code snippets panel will have a look inside of actions. Click to go to web page. And then inside here, we can remove our action script. Instead of stop, we'll say this dot stop. And then I'll paste in everything I took from code snippets. You'll see here that we can modify our URL. So I'm going to direct this to logs.adobe.com slash flash pro. Change this to this.stage. When working in Canvas, sometimes bitmap data is a lot more performant. Let me stop for a second. Did you see how he added this to the this.stop and then he changed that one object to this.stage? The this is actually a keyword. And it is referring to the document itself um, or the document object model, DOM. Um, a browser works with a, each web page that it opens has its own DOM or document object model. And JavaScript is a mechanism by which it, JavaScript will dynamically change that document object model based upon whatever you have it do. And it, what that kind of means is the HTML is going to be changed on the fly. The, that document object model is going to be changed on the fly. For, for example, if we mouse over a button and, and we have in there an event to change the button to a different color on the condition that you mouse over, that's kind of what I mean. That, that's JavaScript doing that. And technically, JavaScript is modifying in real time because it's got the coding to do it, the document object model. So instead of what had come in from the HTML, now JavaScript is equipped to take it to the next level, which means I'm going to dynamically change this document object model, whether it be uh, coloring or formatting or any other action. I'll change what's being displayed. I'm gonna tell the browser to display something different. So that's done with the document object model. And uh, the this is when you use this in that JavaScript coding, he was referring to this instance <coughs> of the document object model, meaning that's this document that's being processed. So he had to use this in there. Uh, the old uh, action script, you didn't need to do that because it, it didn't refer to the this component. So he, you saw him do that. Now, the next step, he's, uh, he's not done because he knows that part of this process is going to be facilitated by converting his uh, animated objects to bitmaps and then he'll, he'll explain how to do that but there's a value for doing that it's because you can then export your uh, objects as sprites and we'll see here in just a minute doing that remember with the sprite sheet we talked about that um, here exporting items as sprites that is it behooves them to do that because it facilitates the number of server requests to reduce that. So he's um, going to explain the process of how to do that, converting each item that is animated to a bitmap. And then there's a checkbox that will facilitate that. <clears throat> and that's to support the architecture of, of Sprite sheets and to minimize the number of requests that these uh, th these moving images, these animated images, are going to be making to the server. So it's a, it's an architecture. It's a way to solve that problem of not going back for each image at its location. Instead, we we grab the image and then we grab its animation, what it does and how that corresponds to the timeline. So by doing that, it's like two things you get, and once they both have come to the browser, it doesn't need to go back to the server to get any more information, because it's got it. It's got the bitmap, and it's got its behavior, its movement, relative to the timeline. Than the vectors. One consideration you might have in preparing your document is actually going in some of the vector-based material and rendering that as a bitmap. I'm simply selecting the shape group here, right-clicking, and choosing convert to bitmap. You'll see. Okay, now the default 
internal um, data structure for graphics is vector. Adobe Flash is vector. But here he's going to kind of get the best of both worlds by saying, okay, I'm not going to do all vector. Instead, I'm going to convert my animated objects to bitmap, which he just did. This, this object is animated, so just convert it to bitmap. And that will lend itself towards this sprite sheet, bitmap sprite sheet export uh, faculty. This is now a bitmap that lives within our library, and we can do that to as many elements as we want. Going into our published settings, there are a few additional things to note. For one thing, if we create a lot of bitmaps, the IAB draft specifies only 15 server calls are allowed. So you hear that? I, I think you said IAV draft. I'm, I'm not really familiar with what that means, um, but I think it has something to do with uh, standards that need to be upheld in creating animations uh, for software development, uh, animation creation companies or whatever. They, they have to uphold the standard of minimizing the number of server requests, and that's what this will help do. Exporting all the bitmaps as a single sprite sheet is going to reduce however many bitmaps we have to only two server calls, one for the sprite sheet itself and the other for the data associated with that. Additionally, any text we have in the document can be converted to outlines, allowing us to use a number of fonts that aren't necessarily available across users' machines. Okay, let me stop there. The old Adobe Flash Swift file allowed you to embed fonts and, and basically you weren't, you weren't dependent upon what fonts were present on the target machine. You, <clears throat> you brought them with you. It's kind of like you brought the baggage with you, the luggage with you, <laughs> and um, you brought the font with you. You weren't dependent upon the font being present, having been installed in the system fonts and, or uh, in the font folder. But that's not supported in the new HTML5 Canvas model. So <clears throat> there's a workaround, and that's this checkbox here, convert text to outlines. Essentially what they've done is uh, taken words and converted them to like um, lines so that, um, so that they, you're not dependent upon the font being present. So this is just lines being converted here. And so, no, we're not bringing the font with us. We're converting the word, the letters to a, a, a text from that, that font to, uh, no longer as it take advantage of the font, it's now becomes text, convert text to outlines. We'll hit okay and let's publish this. Everything animates and looks exactly the same across the Flash player and... Okay, see this here? Garage underscore canvas.html. This is running just on his local machine. <clears throat> so that's the output file. This is not the FLA file. This is the output. And this is the file that <clears throat> gets put on your website. Uh, and then here is the old... SWF, you can see it's requiring the Adobe Flash player to, to do it. And so this is the old way. This is an SWF file being processed by a Flash player. This is an HTML file with JavaScript and sprite sheets being processed by just the plain browser itself. Canvas versions of this document. You can see that we can use the same workflow we're already familiar with to target the native web browser on desktop and mobile devices with ad content created in Flash Professional CC. Ad content creative advertisements. Okay, so now you understand how that process works. Notice that he did not have any option like file open as. That's no, there's no such file open as option or file save as, <clears throat> not that either. It had to be done using this commands mechanism and the editing and so on. Okay, now um, notice uh, what we were just looking at. He had to do some manual editing of the JavaScript, remember that. 
It wasn't automatically converted for him. All right, now this here is a 12 minute video. I'm not gonna press play on this. All I want you to do is to watch that and keep close attention. What you can do is uh, go back and forth between the assessment, which does not have a time limit, and this video and pause and, and, uh, <clears throat> and answer the questions. And uh, remember that uh, there, if, this, if it's a square, in the questions, that means it's a checkbox. It might, uh, there might, is probably more than one items that need to be checked in order to have a true answer, or uh, a true, yeah, the correct answer. And then uh, if it's just a circle in the uh, options, that means it's choose one only. So that's how you can distinguish between that on the assessment. All right, well, uh, that's all I had for today. And if you have any questions on the assessment or the assignment this week, please let me know. If not, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you on Monday.